Hello YouTube, t Van Dam here with another YouTube video. And for those of you who are not familiar with my channel, I am a DIY singer-songwriter based in Southeast London. And today I'm very excited to be continuing my video series all about music royalties. This is part five of the video series where I'll be looking specifically at mechanical royalties. I started this video series a little while ago to basically encourage musicians to understand their own rights to their own music a little bit better and uh, to explain the different royalties that exist depending on how you contribute to the music industry. Um, so the last video I did, I didn't actually talk about a royalty. I actually talked about some fundamental ideas um, about the music industry because I think in order to understand any of these royalties, you actually have to have a really strong understanding of what music is and the different ways that it can exist really. Um, specifically, I was talking about this key idea, which is the idea of authorship rights versus recording rights, because ultimately every, anything music, musical or anything that is music either has to be written by someone or it has to be recorded by someone. These are the two ways that music gets used in our society. Um, so this is important to take note of. And I would say that if you didn't see that video, or if you don't understand this idea more clearly, then I would encourage you to go check out part four of the video series. Um, and this is because I went into a lot more detail. I really worked to like try to explain this. It's a bit messy, but there's a lot of chapters and stuff which help sort of break it down and make it easier to understand. So um, today I'm going to be looking at mechanical royalties and mechanical royalties. The reason I divided mechanical royalties, the, the reason why I did this part four thing and everything, try to break it down was because the third video I did, part three, I was looking at something called the mechanical streaming royalty. So there was this complication, basically. There's a mechanical streaming royalty, and then there's a mechanical royalty. And I was struggling to kind of differentiate the two and explain the difference. And the difference really boils down to a fundamental difference. And it, and it's that key idea I described. So today, I'm going to, because I did that video, I'm going to be following a much more simple structure. I'm going to be looking at the type of royalty we're looking at. I'm going to be talking about where does the money come from. And then I'm going to talk about what makes you entitled to it. Um, different organizations you can join to claim this royalty. And along the way, I'm going to be ironing out some of these questions like what is the difference between mechanical streaming royalties and mechanical royalties? What is that difference? And also, why would you maybe not want to be your own publisher? Why would you not want to claim that right? So there's a lot to get through, but I've written some pretty clear notes and there are chapters and stuff that you can follow. So hopefully it'll be easy for you to follow along. Um, the last thing I need to say before getting into this is that, you know, all this information in this video is based on my own experience and research. So I might make a mistake. I might leave something out. And if I do, please write something in the comments below. Cause I'm looking to improve. I'm looking to help people. I'm looking to learn, you know? Um, also if you do enjoy this video, write something, you know, let me know if you are liking this kind of content. And then lastly, you know, like this video and then subscribe, subscribe, especially if you want to stay in the loop about the new royalties I'll be talking about. So all of that out of the way, let's get into it. So today, this is the type of royalty we're looking at. We're looking at mechanical royalties. Specifically, this royalty is understood in that category between authorship rights and recording rights. Mechanical royalties are author rights, and they're specifically allocated. They're given to people that in authorship are identified as publishers. So in order to get this royalty, you have to be, in order to be eligible, you have to be a publisher of your own music. So you could also be a lyricist, a composer, or an arranger. That's also considered authorship. And that's a far more musical way of thinking about authorship, right? You know, it's like you wrote the words to the song. Well, okay, that's fairly musical. Or let's say you wrote the melody. You know, very musical idea here. These are the musical elements of authorship. But a non-musical element of authorship is actually publishing. If you are a publisher, it's probably the least musical thing you could do with music. However, publishing is your inherent right as a songwriter to, to be your own publisher. It's your inherent right to be your own publisher if you've written a song. And this is because you've created this thing. And so it's only natural that it's your own right to try to promote and monetize it. And that is what music publishing is. Music publishing is the business of promoting and monetizing your music. And so this is a weird thing because basically musicians and specifically songwriters are acquiring this music, this right to be their own publisher but they're not really truly publishers. And I'll talk about what I mean by that in a little bit later, you know, like a little bit later, I'll get into some detail. But for now, we're just talking about the type of royalty. So to continue this idea, so just recapping, mechanical royalties, the ones that I'm talking about today are authorship royalties and they're afforded for publishers. And why is it called a mechanical royalty? And really, let's try to iron out this question mark about what is the difference between mechanical streaming royalties and mechanical royalties. So. To answer this, basically we have to address the fact that all, all mechanical royalties, 
whether they're earned from, you know, the streaming royalty or whatever, you know, both of these royalties are earned in a context, specifically when music is being mechanically reproduced. So what does this mean? So what does it mean to mechanically reproduce something? So mechanically reproducing music, I mean, in the music industry is basically referring to, um, it's basically referring to this uh, idea of, you know, the ability to be able to either play a song over and over again, or to be able to let other people play a song over and over again. So who really fits into that idea in the music industry? Well, the people that fit into that are streaming platforms and also digital stores. These are the people that are basically uh, offering this to people, you know, stream this song. But, you know, Spotify didn't write the music, so they need to be able to aff uh, acquire a license to do this. And then this is how mechanical royalties are actually earned, through licensing. So then we have to ask this other question, and I think that this will really super iron out the difference between mechanical streaming royalties and mechanical royalties, which is that, you know, what is music? Well, all music is either written or recorded. And when we talk about mechanical royalties, all of them, the boat were rather both mechanical royalties that we're discussing, both mechanical royalties are earned in this context where we're talking about recorded music. However, recorded music cannot exist without an author. You, I, 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 I challenge you, I dare you to imagine a song that has no author, but is also recorded, you know, and, and it's a weird thing to think about, but anything that's ever been recorded is authored by somebody. Sometimes it's the person that recorded it. Sometimes it's not. Um, and so you end up opening up this, this, uh, can of worms, this can of weird situations. For instance, there are songwriters who write songs that never record their own music. And in, instead what they do is they sell their written music to pop artists and pop artists make big hits and they make lots of money. But what ends up happening is the pop artists become the recording rights holder. And then the author the person that originally wrote that song is still making money from all of those recordings because remember the recording would not exist without the author. You know, it wouldn't exist without the recording rights holder either. The person that ended up paying for the recording, the recording wouldn't exist without that, you know, but it wouldn't exist if no one wrote it either. Another weird example is when artists uh, record covers of songs that they didn't write. So, um, you know, there are songs that are very famous, you know, that, uh, people say, I love that song and they want to end up covering that song. They didn't write it, but they might end up owning the recording because they might pay for the studio time. Uh, another weird example is let's say that you write a really big song. Let's say you also did your recording. So now you're the recording rights holder and the author. Let's say it's such a popular song. Everyone wants to cover it. Now there's hundreds of covers of this song. So let's say you have hundred covers of the song. You are the author and also the recording rights holder. It doesn't matter if you're the recording rights holder actually, but I mean, you'll get royalties for that for sure. But let's say that someone then, you know, you get all these uh, recording rights holders, all these people that cover your song, you'll get licensing royalties from all of them because you were the author. It all comes back to you because you're the author. So we then ask this question, well, where does the money come from? Now, there is one example, which I think illustrates a lot of these ideas really, really clearly. So I'm going to bring it up. It was, I used it in my last video where part four, where I was basically talking about this a little bit, but, um, this is the example that I think illustrates this idea and a lot of other ideas really well. So, um, recently I worked on an album with Tommy McDonald, a folk, a folk and blues artist based in Southeast London, who is, uh, he basically released this album. It's called, I'm really sorry. It's his Valentine's sort of album. It's comedy, dark comedy. And he basically, um, so basically he recorded this album and the thing is it's all his own original work except for one song. So in order for Tommy to distribute this music, he had to own the recordings and he owned all of the recordings, all of them because he paid me to help him make it. And, you know, it was his own right to be the recording rights holder, right? Um, but this one song he didn't write was a cover of a Willie Nelson song called Crazy, right? So he, he didn't write the song Crazy, but he wanted to be able to distribute the recording. He owns the recording, but he doesn't own the authorship rights. So how does he acquire the license to use this song he didn't write? He pays for a license. It's that simple. He pays the licensing fee. Now, conveniently, DistroKid, his distributor, allows him to pay this fee on a yearly basis. So I think it's something like £10 a year to be able to play a cover of someone else's song. Now, the way that this whole thing operates and the operation of this whole thing, where the money comes from, is basically that Tommy pays the royalty that then gets sent to the Mechanical Royalty Collection Society. The Mechanical Royalty Collection Society basically says, is there a publisher for this song that's been covered? Because we just got money 
for someone having done a cover. And then they find the publisher and they give them that money. That publisher is either Willie Nelson or it's someone that Willie Nelson gave the rights of publishing to. Okay. So this shows us a lot about what's going on. So where does the money come from? Well, firstly, the money comes from artists, actually musicians, people that want to be recording rights holders, but didn't write that music. They pay a license just like Tommy did. The biggest other example, and probably where the majority of this money is coming from, is actually through streaming platforms and stores who basically are allowing their fans to stream or download the music, or in other words, mechanically reproduce the music, but yet that iTunes or Spotify did not themselves author. So they're paying licenses to the Mechanical Royalty Collection Societies to then give to the publisher, which could be... You know, so in the case of Tommy, you know, Tommy is basically going to be getting, he, he should be entitled to mechanical royalties because he should identify himself either as the publisher or he should allocate his publishing rights to someone else. So let's talk about this other idea, which is why would you maybe not want to be your own publisher? So now we talk about publishing and, and, and entitlement. So this is really under the broader spectrum of entitlement, which is you need to identify yourself as your own publisher. So you write your own song, you're inherently your own publisher, but you don't, you can't just start going to the rooftops and be like, I'm my own publisher. You can't do that and start getting this money. You actually need to basically identify yourself as a publisher through a professional institution. Um, however, there are some reasons why you wouldn't want to do this. And I've written two of these reasons now. One is that people who write music who are inherently their own publishers are probably not pros at, public, uh, at promoting or monetizing their own music. So therefore, they would allocate their publishing royalty or their publishing rights to a publishing company to basically help monetize their work. Because let's get real, you are a musician, you write music, you're good at it, and maybe you're good at that. Um, but the thing is, you might not be good at marketing. You might not be good at writing advertisements. You might not be able to get people to listen to you. This is a very common problem with musicians. Another reason, and I'll talk about that a little bit more in a little bit, but, um, another reason why you might not want to be your own publisher is also because you don't have a choice. You can't just say you're your own publisher. That's why musicians don't, uh, they don't take their publishing right because they actually need to work through a third party. It's not an option. All artists that want to claim publishing rights individually need to basically be going through an institution uh, to basically enforce, collect, and pay you your publishing royalties. As an aside, like I was just about to say with point one, is that I want to make a video where I talk about the threshold of DIY musicians. So for instance, if you write your own music, you know, here's a question, do you record your own music? Do, and if you record your own music, does that mean you also play every instrument on the recordings of your own music? Also, do you make your own album art? Do you claim all your own royalties? Where do we draw the line? You know, and I really am excited about this idea because it's the question of all DIY artists. Where are my limits to my own power to enforce myself? So it's like, anyway, I digress. Um, but ultimately, what you should recognize here is that you should be getting this royalty as a songwriter. This is the entitlement concept, right? Why you should be getting this money. Because no recording or no recorded works could exist if they were not also written. So therefore, if you are, and as we know, recorded works are making lots of money for lots of people. You know, Spotify doesn't just pay this licensing and, oh, they're losing money. No, they're making a fortune. They need to pay this licensing, this licensing fee. You should be getting this money because people are profiting. And that's the question you always have to ask. So now we have to ask about who to join. So I've mentioned this idea of mechanical royalty collection societies. Now, um, you need to basically do a few things to identify yourself as this publisher, because this is what we're saying. You have to identify yourself as a publisher. So firstly, you need to prove that you have the right to be your own publisher. And secondly, you need to be able to prove that your music is being published. And that means basically monetized and promoted. So how does this play out in real life? So in England, um, you basically would want to join an institution called MCPS. MCPS is an authorship royalty society, basically. They're a little bit like PRS. They actually work really closely together now because they both defend authorship royalties um, and authorship rights. But basically, they're slightly different because PRS only collects for songwriters and MCPS collects for publishers, which is what I've been talking about this whole video. But to join MCPS, you would have to pay £100. You'd have to send ID, which is proof of you know well, who you are. But then you'd have to show proof of usage. So proving that your music is actually being used on Spotify or, or promoted. 
The U.S. system is a little bit different. The organization that collects and enforces and would pay you these royalties would be the Harry Fox Agency. So Spotify, for instance, is paying a licensing fee to MCPS in the U.K., but for people that are streaming in the United States, they pay that licensing fee to a group called Harry Fox Agency. And DIY artists are not actually able to join Harry Fox directly. You have to work through a publishing administrative company or a label. So it's not really convenient, but the only way to do it would be to work through SongTrust. I will do an entire other video where I talk about SongTrust because SongTrust actually does a lot for their artists, but it comes with a fee. So the idea is ultimately in order to get this royalty, you have to join an institution and you'll either pay a hundred dollar fee or something like that, you know, because it costs a hundred bucks to join SongTrust. And then both Song Trust and MCPS are taking a 10 to 15% royalty. Um, so uh, a 10%, 10 to 15% administrative fee of your royalties rather. So you got to bear all this in mind. That just about covers everything I wanted to discuss in this video. It was a dense video and I congratulate you for getting through it. I'm amazed that I've even done it. I've done maybe like 10 versions of this video now. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you found this interesting, if you found this helpful, please like, please subscribe to my channel. It means a lot. It definitely motivates me to make new videos. And, you know, I'll be making another video soon where I talk about another royalty. Um, but let me know sort of other content that you want me to talk about. I'm really excited about exploring this idea about the limits of DIY uh, artists. So, um, you know, that's something I'll probably do soon. So, yeah, subscribe and stay tuned. I'll see you at the next video. Ciao for now.